Hey guys, welcome to the to the video. Um, I was thinking since I made the last video about replacing the cables of the starter and the voltage regulator that I really didn't um, implement some sub information about the system. So that's uh, why I'm making this video right now. There's another video coming where I will change the stator it will be later this week. Um, but for now, it's just a small tutorial about electro system of the tire or any other uh, basic bike uh, out there, especially bikes from the last 10 years or 20 years even, um, who are running on a three-phase alternator, um, shunt, re uh, shunt rectifier, and a battery. Um, here we have a schematic that's in the manual, the workshop manual. Uh, on page 462 of the yeah of the of the standard manual which shows us like a good overview of what's going on so just to show you the symbols we have the battery this is the starter relay the starter solenoid um, that will work with high amp amperage and the starter motor as you as you can see these cables are the cables uh, we tend to change. There is a mod on the Tiger, and the story behind it is that, it, that you have any electrical problems that this will solve it, but this is not correct. Um, there are issues with the electrical system, uh, like charging the battery, um, that are related to the voltage regulator or to the stator. The stator itself will fail if you add additional components, electrical, um, who have an electrical drop, like um, a gear indicator, auxiliary lights, um, charging systems, like a 12 volt charging system, uh, a GPS, you know, all these small things add up. And your system is measured to just cope with the normal um, Tiger like stock even on the the lighting if you add a high intensity discharge which will uh, put your um, you know your light will push it will give you um, could add up to issues so this system is good if you have cold starting issues because like i showed you in the last video you can draw 170 amps the motor can draw 170 amps from the battery through the cable the new battery I have can, can give a maximum of 200 cold crank amps. So that's just for starting. And it has a tank, fuel tank of uh, 10 amper, uh, 12 amper hours, where the normal US I had 10 amper hours and a maximum of 170 cold crank amps. That's a choice you will have to make. I just did it as a precaution, not because there was something wrong with the system. Well, there was something wrong with the system, but the cables won't help. Okay, I just changed them because they were only 15 euros. And to make it um, the finishing touch. However, um, there are other systems involved in your electrical system. Yeah? One of them is not here. I should like be here, and that's the, um, the stator. And I'll show you here. This is a normal stator of the Triumph. Yeah. And you can see it has normally, it's called a dynamo alt alternator, correct? It has 18 poles and that will be interlinked to three phases. Uh, usually the cables are yellow or orange, but could be uh, they have other, like here. You can see that is a voltage uh, regulator. The cables coming from here could also be yellow, but that depends on the system. All right, so this stator is actually in a case. Let's see how, where I can find it. Here it is. Yeah. Left side, yeah, you have your engine case. It's in there. And around that one is fixed with uh, bolts. The cable will run to the rectifier. And here you have a rotor. The rotor has magnets inside, you create magnetic induction. So what happens then, uh, let's see if I have something here, yes. Um, 
magnetic induction is basically if you run a magnet around an electrical copper wire, eh, a semiconductor or especially a, a conductor, you will have um, a signal. If you do that in three phase, you will have three signals. And the signals are 120 degrees separated. Yeah? So when the, crank, the crankcase turns at too many refs, then your, um, your output will be bigger than it runs on, on idle. Yeah? But that's, it is connected. So what happens, here you have 0 volts, and here you have 12 volts. Or for say, the output of the alternator will be around 17, 16 volts. And you have minus and plus, but since you want to have a DC, yeah, in an AC it doesn't really matter. But since you want to have a DC, you need to disconnect the bottom one and rectify it. So you got this one, the DC waveform, which you can still see it's not 100% straight. Because what, what, you, what you want is a waveform that's flattened out like this. Yeah. But, first of all, what does this, is this one. That's your rectifier. And you can find this on the chassis, like I showed you in the last video. This one is a shunt regulator and a rectifier. First of all, it's going to make your signal from AC to DC, like this, it's just with diodes. A three-phase AC source. It can only go one way. This diode blocks it, and here it's going to let it through to your load, which in our case would be the battery, and that counts for all three phases. So you get a wave like this. To clean up this wave, they're going to add capacitors because they're very, 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 very fast, and they're going to fill up the gaps in between. Yeah, like something I have. This is one I drew a couple of years ago, and it's also rectified. You see two capacitors in here, and they will clean up the signal to make it a straight line. And you have a resistor there to also dissipate the peaks that you still have after it's regulated. And the output is 5 volts in this case, or 12 or 15, no matter, no matter what, it's what you want. Then this will take up the last peak before it goes to the output. So. This stator is very um, yeah, unpredictable, you could say, or depends on the refs. This is all cal uh, calculated. And the regulator it itself, this one, let's go to 362, 462. It's here. Yeah, and you can see that it's connected. If you had this way, this is in case you have a bigger spike coming in, it's going to burn up. To protect it, it's going to charge your battery. And then, what it also does, when the battery is full, it's going to shunt, or it's just going to make sure that the electricity that is uh, produced by the alternator, because the alternator is not smart, it's just going to produce the electricity all the way. And this is like your small computer, it's going to say, hey, now the electricity goes to ground. And your chassis or your engine block will dissipate that uh, that energy yeah, into heat. And also, as you can see here, it's going to go all the way to different channels to your uh, auxiliaries. I think 9 was yeah, the engine control module relays. But this one is going to make sure your battery is charged all the time. It's going to make sure that all your components get the electricity they want. So this thing is going to switch between ground and the battery full and all the systems are running a thousand times a second. So it's going to get very, very, very hot. And the things that regulators, rectifiers are very sensitive on is heat. And here's my point. If you got hot start issues, if you got your rectifier um, in there and you know it's going to get 100 degrees maybe, and it's working well when it's cold and you get issues. Your bike is stalling with a hot with a hot engine or you're running 50 kilometers and it's running and it's just gonna go down. It shuts down. Or you put on your lighting and your refs go down. Um, the big chances is that this is, this is your problem. 
Um, also, maybe it can't just cope, uh, cope with all the additionals you just added. Yeah, just cannot switch fast enough or give the right amount of electricity to all the systems. And it's going to start when it breaks down, this one. The alternator is going to keep on delivering. It's not going to follow up and it's going to start getting peaks in your battery and your batteries, your batteries are going to start just one after the other is going to break down. If you have that, this is the thing you should swap. Not these cables that won't solve any, any, anything. It's, it's, a, it's a nice touch, but it has nothing to do with the charging system. It has something to do with the starting system, which is different. All right. Um, let's see if there's something else I need to address. Yeah, maybe if you look at the battery itself, it has two major functions. First one and most, the biggest one and most of the of its function is starting. That's why they call it a starter battery. It has, the power comes from the alternator, gets is directed by direct by the regulator. It says this, it says, it's in the name. The battery also have, it's like a reservoir of electricity when the system is in need and it like the stator or the rectifier or the regulator can't follow up, then the system will draw from the battery. But then you get problems because your system will draw more energy from the battery than it's, than it's delivered. So what you're going to have, you come home and just next time you write, come home and check your battery. If it's like 12.3 volts, then you have a problem. If you run and you stop the bike and it's just stopped and you check it, it should be minimum 12.8 I think it's somewhere in this as well but I can't I can't remember where that it says it was a nice schematic about the battery action here yeah uh, page 448 it says here state of charge table of battery charging times voltage 12.8 13 volts that's the hundred percent none required here it will normally still start it should be able to start 12.5 volts you need three to six hours to to charge it. if you charge it and the day after you, you you ride for 15 minutes or 20 or an hour come back it's again like like that a charging issue no starter cable will solve that so I think that's about it. I'm just going to check if I didn't forget an, anything. Yeah, this is a, an, an, an important thing. Um, so here you have your regulator, this one. This is an OEM, but you should have a MOSFET. MOSFET, metal oxide, uh, semiconductor, field effect transistor or something. Yeah. Uh, this is like cool. This is in a uh, uh, special case. Yeah. Uh, anodized aluminium, which will dissipate heat even better. I have one from, just going to show you MOSFET, uh, Motorsport. That's the one I got. There's a lot of them there. Let's see. You can see it's also cheaper than the normal one. You have different ones. So 14. New, new starter. This is also the stator I bought. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I didn't buy it via this 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 website, but anyway, should be able to get the picture here. Yeah, so the MOSFET is uh, the difference between a normal shunt regulator and this shunt. There's also a shunt that does the same thing, but the other one they work with um, you can uh, say with a lower uh, quality of silicon. 
Yeah, it's called zener diodes or uh, just uh, just normal diodes, and they're gonna take way more time. And these work with transistors. That's what they say. I don't know. I haven't seen the schematics of the internals, but the ICs, uh, the internal circuits. Um, there's also some uh, gates uh, involved. You know that will allow all the transfer uh, of the electricity and the calculations way smoother. Um, and it's only cost a little bit more if you buy not typically this brand but a MOSFET yeah then you will be uh, set you won't have the same problems because it's its key difference is running cooler and the whole problem you have with the, the normal rectifiers is the, is the temperature so if it runs cooler then you then you solve one problem if you think okay um, that's the one I have actually. That's also the shop I bought it. Let's see, maybe. Need to think. Yes, I think it's that one. Um, if you have these, you know, if you have these better components, then you have to think. Okay, they have a little bit of bigger output. I will have all the additional components on my motorcycle feed. They will have, you know, they will have the electricity they they need. And from there on, you just need something that regulates faster and runs cooler. So that's the MOSFET. Okay, so I think I explained everything I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope this video helped you. Um, the next video will be where I install the, the alternator. Yeah, it's a smooth video. And that will also show you a little bit more yeah, inf information about what's going on. But um, in any case, I hope this one helps. If it does, you can also give me a like or maybe subscribe. I'm going to dive also in more of the systems of the Tiger, especially the engine and the ignition and all these systems via the manuals, do some searching, and then I'll explain on you know, DIY level, you know, I'm not an expert. Uh, I work on wind turbines or army vehicles in, in the past and I work now as a marine engineer but I'm not a motorcycle specialist by any means. Um, I'm just a DIY guy so know this and always verify what I say, worst case. Um, be careful when you work on your own bike and if you like it let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video and take care. Cheers.